Imagine with me that this church is actually a big river where the tabernacle is underneath the crucifix. That's the goal. That's where we want to go. That's heaven. That's becoming a saint, getting to the destination. That's where we want to go. The bad news about this river, though, is that the current of this river is going that way. Yes, the current of our culture, the water is flowing aggressively that way, trying to pull us away from becoming a saint and getting to our destination. Maybe some older people here remember the good old days when you were growing up, when it felt somewhat easy to be Catholic, but today it's a much, much different story. For example, recently I was talking with a grade eight student And he said how hard it was to be Catholic at his own Catholic school. Get this, in his class of 30 students, guess how many students are openly pro-abortion? 25. 25 out of 30, one year after confirmation, are openly pro-abortion. And the number is even higher for those who are pro-same-sex unions, even higher for those who no longer go to Sunday Mass. And this is not just a unique issue in his class, it's everywhere. It's even higher in, in senior grades of high school, university, and goes on and on. And so here I am as a priest, and I get 15 minutes on a Sunday to tell you, hey, that's the destination, that's where you want to go. And then you leave here, and the culture is pulling you in the opposite direction, promoting obviously values and ideas that are against everything about becoming a saint and getting to where we want to go, heaven. That's the truth. And the truth is we feel this pull against where we want to go, and we feel like there are just two options in life. The first option is just this. We just... Hold on. We just feel like with our faith, we just have to white knuckle it and just hold on. You know, you're aware that the current of the culture is going that way so aggressively, and you're afraid you might get swept away. So, what do you do? You just focus on holding on. You don't bother about reaching out to other people, possibly evangelizing or getting into those difficult conversations about heated topics because you feel like if you do, you might get swept away by the cancel culture. And so you just focus on holding on. You just mind your own business, just check the box and hope that you can get to that destination when your journey's over. And this option, many of us feel like that is the only way to live the faith in today's culture. Just white knuckle it and hold on. But as you might experience, if you just white knuckle it and hold on, your faith is empty of joy, empty of purpose. It just feels like you're just checking the box and you miss the joy that Jesus speaks about that should happen if you're living your faith. And as well, The current of this culture, the water, is getting more and more aggressively going the opposite direction. And so anyone who's tried to experience holding on to something, when you feel someone else trying to pull you the other way, eventually you just got to let go. And that's the second option. Just let go. No longer hold on anymore. Just let go and you're free. And all of us here know many people who have already chosen this option. There are many people who should be sitting right beside you here at this Mass who have chosen the option of letting go. Many of our family members, friends, loved ones, have stopped trying to hold on and have just let go and given in to the values and ideas of our culture. And hey, guess what? When you let go, there are so many great excuses about why you let go. There is a huge list that you could come up with. Maybe some of you have already thought about it. Great excuses for why you no longer have to be a practicing Catholic. Like the priest sexual abuse crisis, residential school issue, the list goes on and on and on. There's a huge, wide variety of options you could choose from that sound really appealing to why you no longer have to hold on and try to be Catholic. 
But the result of just getting swept away is even more tragic than holding on. Because it, when you're truly free from God, you're truly free from all that is good and beautiful and lovely in life. You get swept away. And anyone who gets swept away by the culture, what happens when you're out into the water for quite a while? You get seasick. You get seasick. And that is the condition of our souls when we are swept away from God. We are seasick. And that explains pretty much my entire experience in university. Seasick. I thought I was truly free. I went to university in California. I had everything paid for. I got to play golf every day, even skip class, play golf. I could go partying any night I wanted to, and that was often my default decision. Play video games all night, eat out every single meal. I was totally free. I got to do whatever I wanted. But deep down inside, when you are totally free from God, the inner ache and emptiness and void of meaning and purpose in life, all of a sudden you start to become aware that, hey, I kind of feel seasick inside. I don't have really a peace inside of me. I don't have a joy. I don't feel like life has much meaning. And so when you're out seasick, it's just, ah, I don't know what to do. And the culture is starting to become aware of this. The culture is starting to give us signs that, hey, when you are far away from God, it really destroys us. Depression, anxiety, suicide, all these things have been skyrocketing as a result of this culture sweeping people away from God. And so many of us feel like those are the only two options. We just hold on, white knuckle it, or we just get swept away by the culture. But there is another option. And I have good news. I'm not just the social commentator. I am the good news proclamator. And that's what I've come here for, to proclaim good news. And so there is a third option. And as I usually do, I have props to explain all my things. So I have a prop for you today. OK, and this prop can come alive as well. So my third option for us is to swim. We don't have to hold on. We don't have to get swept away. We can swim. In fact, we are made to swim. That's how God made us. We are made to swim. And if there is one creature that gives us the most inspiring image of what it looks like to swim, it is the salmon. And this little guy, he comes alive. And that's what we're made to do as well. We are made to come alive, like this salmon. Some of you might know salmon begin their lives in relative comfort. They're in rivers, streams, and eventually they make their way downstream to the ocean. They get to feed on little fish, and they grow large in size for about five years. But when they finally become an adult, what do salmon do? They swim upstream. They undertake what's truly an amazing journey sometimes swimming against the current upstream for 900 miles, 7,000 feet in elevation, navigating roaring rapids, vicious currents, hungry bears, fishermen, all of this stuff for one purpose, to get to their home, to get to their home, so that when they die, they can produce an abundance of new life. That is what a salmon does. It goes through all of the difficulties upstream against the current for one reason, to produce abundant life. So that when their time has come, the sacrifice of the parent all of a sudden brings forth new life for all of the children. That's what a salmon does. And this salmon's journey is a profound picture in nature of the life of Christ. Today's second reading, we heard that Jesus, for the sake of the joy that was set before him, endured all the hostility of sinners and even the shame of the cross. He swam upstream to the goal of heaven. Why? For one purpose, so that in his death, 
when his journey would end, what would happen? He would bring forth an abundance of new life for his children. And he did it. And throughout history, saints have been people, ordinary men and women, who have rejected the option of just holding on to their faith, white-knuckling it. They've rejected the, the ideas and values of the culture, getting swept away, and they've decided, like Jesus, to be like a salmon, to swim upstream against whatever the culture's throwing at them. And what do they do? They bring forth an abundance of new life. For example, today, we celebrate the feast day of Maximilian Kolbe. It's his feast day today. And Maximilian Kolbe, as some of you know, was a prisoner in Auschwitz. The worst Nazi prison camp is where Maximilian Kolbe was sent to. He had an advanced case of tuberculosis. He had all the reasons just to white-knuckle it, just to hold on. He also had all the reasons to give in to the culture of that time in that prison camp, to just be like the other prisoners and fight each other, trying to grasp at the food rations, trying to work their way up to get out of the prison camp. But what did Maximilian Kolbe do? He rejected those ideas. He swam upstream against the current of the culture. He was radical in his love for other people. He risked his own life at night to hear the confessions of other prisoners so that they would get to that goal of heaven. He would give away his food rations. He didn't care because he knew one day his life's going to end. And what does he want? He wants to be able to bear an abundance of new life to people when his life is over. And that's what he did. He gave his own life for a stranger. And today, Maximilian Kolbe not only inspired hundreds of other people in Auschwitz to show love in the face of hatred, but he continues to inspire thousands and millions of people to also give their lives to God, to say, I'm sick of just holding on I'm sick of just giving in to this culture that pro provides no happiness, no joy, just emptiness. And maybe, like Maximilian Kolbe, I can fight against the stream. I can swim upstream to the goal of heaven. So when my time is done, when your time is done, what's going to be seen? An abundance of new life. An abundance of new life. In today's second reading, we heard that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And let us run with perseverance the race set before us. Right now, brothers and sisters, the saints are looking at you and me. We are the race. We have the journey to go on. And some of us are just holding on. And the saints are, are devastated that some of us are just holding on. When there's a race before us, some of us have gotten swept away and the saints are heartbroken, just begging someone to intervene in their lives because there's nothing better in life than running with perseverance, than swimming upstream so that when you and me die, there's an abundance of new life. What do you want to be said at your funeral? What do you want to be said at your funeral? If your funeral was tonight, what would be said? What would be said? If we can start living as if we are going to die tonight, then that will give us courage to swim upstream against this culture. The race is today. The saints are looking at you and me, wondering, what are we going to do? They have one TV in heaven, and it is on us. And they are looking at you and me to see what is our response going to be? What is our response? And some of us today might have the courage to say, you know what? I want to swim this race. I want to go upstream. Because when I die, I want to produce an abundance of new life. That's what I want to be known for. How about you? How about me? What do you want to be known for when you die? 
Do you want to be like a salmon? Do you want to be like Christ? Do you want to be like Maximilian Kolbe, to be known as someone who produced an abundance of new life? That's what I want to be known for. How about you?